off course things. I'll be the ball washer. Okay. That Mike went to the game on Saturday night. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, good man. Wow. Good man. I'd like to uh, briefly recap the phone call that I received from my brother-in-law when I got home on Friday. It went something like this. Hello. Mike. Yeah. Lou. Yeah. And then a pause and then, come on, man. And that's it. That's all it took. That's all it took after all the brow beating. And, and as soon as I decided to go to the game, I look over and my wife is just ecstatic. She's looking at me and she is so happy. And she says to me, you know something? I was really disappointed in you when you weren't going to go to that game. And now I'm happy. And then I immediately called you to yeah. say yes. You controlled my personal life. I am going to the game. Just and helped you make the right decision. Yep. And I realized as soon as I decided I was going to go, it's really what I wanted to do all along, even though I thought they'd lose, which they did. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I was still happy. I was still happy in the, you know, like the worst game they played. <laughs> but I was still glad I went to the game. It was fun to be there. It was fun to be there. All right, there you go. Balls washed after balls were broken. Thank you. On Friday, show it. Hello, editor. Thank you for listening. Coast to Coast and Nationwide. Via Vestwood Von. Well, we don't have time for all that crap today. We say it every day anyway. George, stand back now. Watch. Watch me as I whip this out. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been a little bit tighter, but Robbie Spiewak was taking our canned applause out of the machine right when I needed it. Oh. <laughs> Robbie, you know I can't live without my canned applause. Where else would you rather Oops. be <laughs> than right here? Well, that's a beater. Right now. And uh, here he is to my left and to your right. The Pinocchio of this show, the little boy who refuses to grow up, our friend Buzz Viagra. Hello, Buzz. Hi, Don. Hi, Mike. Hi, Buzz. Hi. Well, Buzz, I'm ready for you to have your conniption fit. Really? Why? Oh, the parking space? Yeah. Uh, was it taken? Yeah. What's going on here today? All the t all the parking spaces were taken. Is there some sort of party we weren't invited to? It's uh, the Ropers. Really? The, uh, yeah. the landlords upstairs, they have uh, <laughs> they have moved in all of the people in the business. Oh, well, they're, upstairs. Going to have to, they're going to have to learn then, aren't they? Yeah. They're going to have to learn the hard way. But I was just wondering what Buzz's reaction to that would be. Someone, to, someone will pay. To start the show on a good-looking Monday. Yeah. Buzz, uh, was that the second? time in the last month that you were really angry. <laughs> no, no, I, I kept it in this time. Good. Decided not to, uh, Good. Not to lose it. Held it in, huh? Yeah. <laughs> if you want to let it explode, mm -hmm. let me know. I'll let you know. It's good, Buzz. You know, I don't do it that often either, but it was good on Friday to, it's to let it out. To, yes. You know, when you purge yourself, it's this, uh, I think I mentioned that to you in the hall, it's a strange feeling of relief. Eh? Third Eye Blind song, yep. that song, How's It Gonna Be? How's that song go, Rob? I don't listen to uh, pop music, so I don't know. I'm sorry. Wow. You don't? No, my wife would know. I don't like the Third Eye Blind. I'm sorry. I thought you did. I thought you did listen to pop music. I did five years ago, but I've been, I'm alienated now. <laughs> hey, listen to this. I ask him something about today, right? <laughs> do you hear that? I have no clue. Right. Twenty minutes ago, before we did the show, I, I threw this out. I, we're just just BSing before the show. Right. And I say, hey, I logged on a couple of minutes of the match game over the weekend mm. on the game show channel. That's right. And I saw Bob Barker was one of the contestants. And mm. we were laughing about that. Mm. And Rob says, hey, I saw that too. And then he names everybody else on the panel. I yeah. thought it was one of the most impressive displays I've ever seen. He aced all the panel members. I, really? I remember things that are useful to me, I suppose. Really savantish. Yeah. Who, was, who was on that panel of this obscure game show? And Rob and I had to be the only two guys in America did that we just lose a light in here or something? Did oh, the no, light go? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mike, it's the thunderstorm light. Oh, I'm sorry. We're avoiding it right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's over directly over my head, and I, I just uh, it changes the light in the room. When Why don't we just up. unscrew that? <laughs> we could, you know. Did you notice that? Well, I mean, all the, these lights go out, go on all the time, but mm -hmm. that was the only one that has an extra little pop to it or something. It stays that's on. It. That's because the DJ is supposed to pay attention. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so the the uh, the short attention span of the modern DJ, <laughs> really, they right. make sure it's stays on for a long time. You see, there's bad th thunderstorms right now going through the area. Mm -hmm. And F that. <laughs> well, now we <laughs> said it. So. <laughs> you want the weather? Look out the window. And plus, <laughs> they never, never know what the weather's going to be. Wasn't Saturday supposed to be nice? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Saturday sucked. Mm -hmm. Like tornadoes coming through the area and yes. stuff. Mm -hmm. I, man, I was out in that stuff, and that, that it just came in so quickly. They said it was moving at 35 to 40 miles an hour. So the weather guys that, that I guess, figured this out when it was two miles from the D.C. area oh, mm -hmm. said something along the lines of, well, there's a ridge coming through. We expect the ridge to be. It's coming in now. Run. Run for your lives. <laughs> and it's not only the weather guys here.
It's all of them. Sure, all of them, all across the country. They just don't have a clue. Rob, who was on that panel? Oh. On that Match Game panel? <laughs> Third Eye Blind song, How's It Gonna Be? Buzz, how does that go? You like Third Eye Blind. I do. I like him very much, but you know I'm not a great singer. Come on, how does it go? I know. I know. It goes, how's it gonna be? No. No, 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 Buzz. How's it go? How's it gonna be? Da -da 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 -da. You know, I don't know. It's it's that's what. How's it gonna be when it's over? Michael Jordan's got Dan Patrick so far. He's making room in his bong for a mod Rashad. Yeah, and while that was playing, mm -hmm. yeah. then normally that's the point when I turn it off. Right. When it's slow motion, like of them winning their other championships right. and stuff. Was Ann Ramsey on that? The old man was he? Uh, Jack Ramsey <laughs> stayed with him. <laughs> okay. No, Mike. No, right. no, he wasn't. <laughs> it was a great moment for it those was. of us, you know, yeah. who love life in Michael's bunk. Uh, Michael, <laughs> Michael is the guy. I mean, he's the, he won it. He's the man. Yeah. Hey, he cheated though. Did he cheat? Does everybody know that he cheated on See, the last play? See, I don't know play. this. I'm not a basketball fan. You explain right. this to me in the office. The last play, Russell is coming at him, and Jordan jukes him a little bit. As Russell is going to Jordan's right, Jordan puts his hand right on Russell's hip. I'm thinking about doing that at the end of every show that we do. As as I leave the studio, yeah. turn around. You got to do it now. You got now. Wait a minute. You got now. Even though I'm not a basketball fan, you didn't do that right. You got to do it like he did it. You walk out of the studio every night and you do one of these. <laughs> you just hit the track lighting. Ow. 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 That hurt me. Ow. Ow. Rob, yes. who was on the match game panel? Clockwise from the upper left is Della Reese. One day, I, I went, uh, in fact, the day before the heart attack, we went and took over their program one morning huh. and uh, totally destroyed them. But, uh, they, you could doctor tape. Doctor. Doctor. They go together better than bowel movements and oral sex. Don Geronimo and Michael Mara. Hey, Rudy. Yeah, Don. Ready for Big Call 100? Yes, I am. Here we go. Don and Mike show. Hello. Is that yes. me making that sound? Yeah, a little bit. Don't move your head down. Hello? Hello. Hello. Am I the caller? Yes, you're Call 100. <laughs> I'm not making that sound. Yeah, baby. Oh, my God. Somebody oh. get a mop right now. Oh, We've got a spill in aisle, too. Oh. This is the magic of Rudy Marsky doing this contest. Oh, I'm so nice. What, oh. is, what is your name? Vonetta. <laughs> Where are you from, Lynetta? Jonetta from Arlington. Vonetta, Don. Vonetta? Vonetta. Joe, Jonetta. Jonetta. Jo yes. All right, Velveeta, listen. Oh, You're, oh my gosh. Caller one. Okay. Caller, caller 100, and here's Rudy Martsky to tell you about your prize. Rudy? Okay, Vanetta, for your excitement, you have won a Harley Davidson gift pack courtesy of Wa Harley Davidson, the nation's number one dealer. Okay. Call 1 800 88 W A U G H. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, thanks. For a chance to win your very own Harley. For a chance. Bonetta. Thank you. But wait, there's more. You've also won the chance to come down here to the Don and Mike World Broadcast headquarters next Friday. Okay. We're going to have you jump into our 5,000 gallon pool full of mud. That was a good exchange, too, okay. fellas. And out of 50 listeners, okay. three of them will each win $2,500 from Equity Plus yeah. Financial. Yes, I know. Yeah, that would be a good con to see who has worse shaking hands, Milton Berle <laughs> or Rudy Martsky. Okay. Thank you. You got the shakes, Rudy. Hey, uh, thank you uh, for listening there. Way to go, Vonetta. No, I can't believe this. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Jonetta or okay. Vonetta? Jonetta. Jonetta. Jonetta, yes. All right, thank you. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Just a second. So, Rudy. Oh, let me play you in. Here's his official theme song. Yeah. Remember, he's a workaholic. You like, you like it's USA Today's Rudy Martsky. Here he is. Yeah. Rudy. 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 A message to you, Rudy. Rudy. A message to you, Rudy. Rudy. A message to you, Rudy. 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 All right. <laughs> Rupert, how you, doing, how you doing, guys? How you doing? Last night, yeah. That show. What kind of ratings they get for that Bulls final game? They won't get the national tilt tomorrow, but the overnight is a twenty-three. It's going to set an all-time record for it in, for any basketball uh, games audience in this country. There'll probably be about sixty-five million or more people who watched, and um, 
the rating will end up being about a 21.5 at least, maybe close to a 22. And the previous high was, how about this, 10 years ago for a Pistons Lakers game seven on CBS it did a 21-2. Mm-hmm. So this game could be uh, a half a rating point higher than that one. That's incredible. It was a great oh, game. Yeah. Wow. Loved it. I'm, I'm reading your uh, column here today in USA Today. Uh, you see uh, Ahmad Rashad. You gave him one of your uh, thumbs up. Okay. Well, Ahmad does. The, he, if, he, if he's not just touting Michael all the time, he does a pretty good job of. He had to be all over the Pippin story last night. Mm-hmm. All right, then you have Hannah Storm, who I noticed since you told us she was knocked up, I've noticed mm-hmm. that they can't hide it. She, they put her in a blazer, <laughs> and she buttons the first two buttons, but then after that. It's wide open because she must be very pregnant, Hannah, well, Hannah Storm, right? Seven months, Don. I mean, oh, really? And she tried to tell me it was eight months that pregnancies really last ten, and I, it was too complicated for me. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. So she's so, almost ready yeah. to have that baby. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's it's uh, uh, six or seven weeks away. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. And then you write good about her, Hannah Storm, and then Jim Gray, who we've had on the show. You write nice stuff about him, and then Bob Costas. I said today that I think Bob Costas did a good job because he has to dumb down his comments. For Zeke and Doug Collins, well, don't you is, think so? Well, just a minute now. You know Collins is the best NBA analyst there is, Don. And if you take him, even put him up against Billy Packer and Dick Vitale, he probably would be number one. Period. But but normally when you're watching Bob Costas, here's how he would describe it: mm-hmm. Michael Jordan, the uh, the equivalent of uh, Barishnikov mm-hmm. as he dives to the mm-hmm. basket, right. elegance and grace, the finger roll behind the back, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. magnifique. You he's know, really he's really yeah, one yeah. of the and last then, guys who's a real wordsmith yeah. uh, that's a sports guy. Then same play. Here's how he describes it with with uh, Isaiah Thomas and Doug Collins. <laughs> here's Michael Jordan jumping very high, <laughs> shoots. It went through the hoop. It's good. <laughs> Zeke. Yeah. Right? Do you, do you get what I'm saying? That normally uh, he's got you. Listen, here, very here, here, flowery, here. very descriptive. Yeah, now here's the thing. Bob gets criticism for that. Some people don't like that. They think he's like trying to become, let's say, the whole telecast over what we're watching. However, I think, as I wrote last week, uh, Costas, uh, I think after 24 years in the business, has earned the right to, to be able to like throw opinions in. Get a little uh, wax, a little poetic in these games. And it's funny, as much as people want to criticize that, I had a guy today, one of these advertising guys from New York, told me, hey, he went all the way along with, with what Costas did in the sign-off last night, where Costas was saying, you know, it's it's something that's it's not just Jordan and, and that he might be leaving. It's this whole Bulls team that you're never, because of all these free agency contracts right now and everybody's loose, you can't keep teams together anymore. And this might be the last in any sport we see a team like this with a run like this. But what about my thought that he has to dumb down his comments? No, I don't. No, I don't think he dumbs it down for those guys. Hey, I'm a defender of Isaiah Thomas. I the, I think Isaiah, if you listen to him, does a very good job coming up with key points with a lot of thought behind it. But what NBC shouldn't do is let Isaiah speak for a long time in that stand up before the game. He screwed up last night's. He, he got mis- discombobulated as as he got into his points, and he was almost as bad as Peter Vesey was the previous. So, who games. Do you, what do you give? Uh, what do you give the telecast for NBC? What's your grade? I left it out just because you guys. No, I, but I what, is, what is your grade? An overall B plus. Oh, oh, yes. B, B plus. Oh. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Uh-huh. big yes. man when he was yeah. going to have to put it in the newspaper. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, let me say this to you: was the first edition was a B plus, final edition grade came out because we needed the space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So you mean in the in the early editions of USA Today, you it actually says you gave them a B plus? Yeah, yeah, it did. Uh, See, <laughs> now, in fact, there was a special one sent to us. I had three different versions of that column because I was writing through the night, kept writing because of all the editions changing, and uh, yeah, there's three different. Uh, their grade kept dropping. Well, can I ask you one? <laughs> can I ask you a hockey question? Yeah. A serious sure. hockey question. Yeah. Obviously, the ratings. You know, it's been written about the ratings for hockey in the toilet right now. And and do you see? Is the NHL? You know, anybody that's even a big fan of hockey knows that hockey is just not a good TV sport. It's really a tough sport. Rudy, actually. Uh, Will he make it home? <laughs> On Jim Carrey these days, the face is the only thing that's rubbery. Hmm. That's your tease. Was that a Viagra story or something Why, like that? Yes, it is. Oh, 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 see, I knew boners in the news. Hey, hey. We'll be right back. This is the Dawn and Mike Show. The Dawn and Mike Show on 98.1 The Peak. 
mighty game. You can call Don and Mike anytime, toll free at one. New in the building? Yeah, I just moved in Monday. Oh, you like it so far? Mm-hmm. Everybody's been real nice. Well, that's because you have big jugs. <laughs> I mean, your boobs are huge. I mean, I want to squeeze them. <sighs> Mama! <laughs> they got game. Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. And listen, I know we're getting right to do some comment here with Buzz Burbank, so let me mention, I guess on tomorrow's show, you got some Jim Carrey stuff happening here. Tomorrow yes. we'll be calling the real side... Pla the, the real life seaside Florida, right? Yeah. The fakey, plasticky, Disney-like town <laughs> that they used to film the Truman Show. Right. Good. Yeah. That'll be on tomorrow's show. And don't let me forget that this week, strip trivia referring. Oh Ooh. my God! Yeah. Strip trivia. Yeah. So we'll probably have to start our trolling on tomorrow's show. Yes, sir. Put out the lines. Let's see what we get. <laughs> and now with news and comment, Buzz Burbank, and we already know the lead story is about the rubbery-faced Jim Carrey. And his Viagra, our friends at the Globe, you, you know the old Globe. You know the old Globe. That tabloid, oh, yes, <laughs> that tabloid <laughs> reports that Jim Carrey is using Viagra and that it has <clears throat> fueled his reunion with his ex-wife, Lauren Hawley. They've been uh, out and about together, apparently uh, the divorced couple getting back together, and the tabloid reports that Viagra gets part of the credit He's for that. He's a very young man to be using Viagra. Well, very surprised. That's why the Globe quotes a doctor saying that Jim's sexual performance could have been diminished by his long-term use of Prozac, which he has talked about publicly, <laughs> oh, as no. well as his use of yeah. Viagra. You know, now when you think about it... Jim Carrey, his personal life when he was a kid right. was all effed up. He yes. was homeless. Right. He lived in a van for yep. a while. His dad was like a bum. Yeah. That's not a joke. That's that's true. true. Yeah. And he says that screwed him up, and he says that's why he's had to be on Prozac all these years, and still is. That's not funny. And now he can't get a boner. He, well, he can with the Viagra. Hey. That's great. That Viagra has done very well for him. Miracle for some people. That's Here, good. Uh, the Truman Show was number one at the box office this past weekend. You know what? Someday somebody should bring some Viagra in. Mm -hmm. and we should have it. a Viagra test. Yeah, we should all take some Viagra. And then we should, like, look at a, at a porno or something and oh, see if, if we all get horny. And then we'll Yeah, but I mean, if you look at a porno, you only need Viagra if you don't react. But no, no, no. Here's right. what I'm saying. Right. In a room like this, if we were doing the show, right. mm -hmm. when we watch a porno during the show, mm -hmm. you don't get a boner, right? No. Well, well, you know. All right, well, I don't. <laughs> And I was thinking that maybe if we, if we took some Viagra... We've yeah. never looked at a porno in this studio that has had that effect on me. But if we looked at a good one, it might ha It could happen. Well, listen, maybe we could watch the porno... I'm not taking any Viagra. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We watch the porno without Viagra. Okay. And we see if we become aroused. Right. Then we take the Viagra. We give it time to work in our system. We mm -hmm. watch the porno again. Right. And then we see if we get boners. <laughs> I hear it that would be a good experiment. I, I hear it doesn't make any difference if you're functioning normally anyway. That that taking Viagra. I'm getting a boner right now just oh, talking about there it. There you go. There's the psychological effect. <laughs> yeah, that excites you the whole the whole concept. <laughs> boners in space. <laughs> boners. <laughs> would, would there be some on the level doctor out there who could get us some real Viagra? Well, what he's saying, what Buzz is saying, is right. Is that if you're functioning normally, it doesn't heighten what would get you yeah. excited what what it does is it gives somebody who can't at all the ability to uh to, Mike, to do it i know you what, want it you want it buzz is saying yeah. <laughs> right i don't trust buzz on everything <laughs> the great viagra experiment yeah oh and you know what we should have the viagra when we have um What's that girl's name? Nina Knockers? Nikki Knockers. Nikki Knockers. Oh, she's coming on the show. That's right. Oh, yeah, Nikki see. Knockers, no bra can hold her. She's coming on the show this oh, week. Dear. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki Knockers and a big pile of Viagra. Cool. Well, hey, listen, if some doctor out there would bring by some licensed Viagra, since I don't want to buy it on the black market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Professor Backwards. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be bringing by the Viagra. <laughs> hey, if it was real, I'd take it. I'd pop a couple of them during the show. Oh, See if there was any results. And I, I think that's a magnificent... And, you know, we'll take your word for it if it works. Yeah. I don't think you have to demonstrate it at all. <laughs> I'll, I'll stand over here. <laughs> You'll have to stand back a few more feet, Buzz. Yeah. <laughs> oh! The, uh, the Truman Show was... Right, well, who, else, who else would take the Viagra? agree with me. You know something? It, I'm not going to take it. I know you're not. Right. 
What about you, Rob? No, thank you. No, thank you. If I was going to take it, it wouldn't be here. Why? It wouldn't be here at work. Well, it would be, you know, someplace where I could put it to good use. I'm not going to take something I don't need. And then, you know, and something that's like an experimental product that they're going to come out in a month and say, incidentally, for all those sufferers of impotence that took Viagra, well, you're going to grow a third eye. If you only took two of them, all right? I mean, it's nice if you take it like every day. Kills people, you know. Only two. Only two people died? No, no, um, I, what I meant is I would only take two. Well, you only take two. I would only is, take two. Is that the proper dosage? I thought it was just one. I don't know. Yeah, see, there you're already in trouble. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Jim Carrey's Truman Show was number one at the box office. You'll take the Viagra and he'll go, my headache's gone. <laughs> <laughs> my ass doesn't smell. Say, <laughs> your ass doesn't smell. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> 20 million. Ass don't smell. <laughs> <laughs> $20 million for the Truman Show over the weekend with Jim Carrey. Six days, seven nights uh, with Anne Heche and uh, uh, premiered in second place at $16 million. Not a bad showing, although it didn't debut at number one and the Truman Show held on for a second week. A Perfect Murder was third. Can't Hardly Wait was fourth. Good That's movie, that Perfect Murder. You Listen, like that? If you like Michael Douglas... You'll like this movie. And yeah. you like him in that Gordon Gecko kind of slicky rich guy role, which yeah. I love him in. He's the best. I spent so much time just looking at the movie at like his uh, at his apartment and looking at his... Uh, I thought his, you were going to say something else there. His office. <laughs> and his boner. <laughs> which brings us to Godzilla, who was fifth. Uh, Imagine of... Godzilla's boner. Oh, oh my God. Uh, you'd have, you'd need, you know, that would go all the way to New Jersey. <laughs> Forget about it. It's a bridge. <laughs> Hope Floats it. was sixth. Deep Impact uh, was seventh. Uh, people are surprised that, that Deep Impact has held on as long as it has. It's made $129 million now. The Horse Whisperer in eighth place. Dirty Work ninth. And Bullworth tenth. Titanic dropped off the top ten this week for the first time. Dirty Work. How did that Norm MacDonald uh, movie uh, do? How much did it make? Uh, $3.6 million. Not a lot. Not much more than I expected. Really. Stinky. That's yeah. kind of a stiff, right? Yeah. Well, for that kind of he a said movie. stiff. There I go again. I got Viagra on the brain. Boner, boner, boner. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I think that's all they really expect for a movie like this. When they make a B movie, they know it's a B movie. <laughs> uh, Buzz, let's do a, a quick break. B as in boner. Oh, God. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. The Don and Mike Show on 98.1 The Peak. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Hi. Hi. I'm on. Yes, ma'am. This is Tracy from Reno. Yes, hi, Tracy. How are you doing? Great. I, I'm, I'm mailing you my pictures. I'm the swinger that you guys think, you don't believe I'm good looking. Me and my old right, friend. all swingers are pigs. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, my picture's in the mail because the facts didn't take. Can you enlighten us on our current discussion at all? Um, what I want to do is, I, my boyfriend's 20 miles behind me on the road, and yeah. I'm home now, and I just want to let him know that I want to give him a, give him a nice, wet, sloppy Monica when he gets home. Uh, all right. Okay. Poontang. Say Poontang. Now, Poontang. if we saw this woman somewhere, I would say to Mike, oh, Poontang. <laughs> I never do this, right? No. I have, I've heard you. I have never, ever taken it that way when you've said it. Even when I say it like that, oh, Poontang. No. Yeah. No. no. That's, that's how I, maybe I'm going to have to change the way I use it. <laughs> but that's how I've always meant it. No oh. offense to you, ma'am. Oh, I don't take offense. Okay, poor time. <laughs> when you see my picture, you'll change your mind. Right. I'm sure I will. Thank you. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Hello there, Don and Mike show. Yeah, I want to talk to Don and Mike. <laughs> yes, you're on the air. Hi. Okay. I've got um, the American Dictionary of Slang here with an exact ah. definition for poontang. All right, sure. And it's two words, and the actual definition is... The vagina of a negress or mulatto, a negro or mulatto woman considered sexually. That's right out of the dictionary. Uh, well, that's not at all what we were thinking. Huh. Well, yeah. I know. I just wanted to let you know that I've got an actual Thank definition you. of it. No problem. That may surprise a lot of people. That's amazing. Huh. And what is mulatto? What is that, like half black and half white? I think it's a mixing of yes. the races. Mm -hmm. It's a, you know, it's an old term, right? <laughs> mulatto. An ant antiquated term. Mm -hmm. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Hello. Hey. Hey, it's a black slang term. That's where it came from. Well, the, but I'm not a black guy. Mike's not a black I know, guy. I might have come from black whiteys, guys. Us whiteys have adopted it just like we have other black slang terms. Yeah, okay. That that sounds valid. Yeah, that okay. sounds valid. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Yeah, do you think poontang is in relation to fuck you? Yeah. How, about, how about harpoon? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, um, I was listening to... Lampoon. Mm -hmm. Lamp yeah. Playing the poon game with you. Yeah, now. Oh, you tampoon. <laughs> that is how our British guy would say tampon. Tampoon. Do you have any tampoons? Dudes, man, listen. I saw... What? Okay, speaking of poontain. What? I saw the uh, the Anne Heche movie. 
six days, seven nights. Uh, yes. My fiance. Yeah. Nasty poon. And you know something? And I tried to watch yeah, it. Yeah, see, if you're going to say, that's that's a good use of the word. Negatively, is if you're going to use it in a derogatory fashion, yeah. you, you pepper it with a, with a derogatory adjective mm-hmm. immediately prior to saying yeah. poon. All right, you say tomato. Yeah. And I say tomato. Well, and next time if you're around me and you're going to use that, yeah. po- you know, just pop in an extra adjective just yeah. so I'll know that you're, you're, you know, you're saying ugly. Let's you know. go back to the sales office right now. Okay. And we'll look at some girls. <laughs> yeah, and, and then you, you can, like, throw it out there. Yeah, I will do some, uh, some announcing with you there. And, you know, and they'll I'll, say, I'll describe uh, the girls as they walk by. say, you know. And then everybody that works here will be saying, what are they doing in the corner again? <laughs> They're standing in the corner looking at us. <laughs> laughing hysterically. Buzz, look what's happened to your news and comments. It's amazing. Look at, <laughs> look at that. What's your next story? We will change this topic. About now. Steven Spielberg's new movie. We're going from sex to violence here. There is so much violence. Oh, I, I was just asking what the story is about. Okay. We, have, we have to do a quick break. Well, let's do that then. So the next story is about Steven Spielberg's next movie. When we come right back. <laughs> This is the Don and Mike Show. The Don and Mike Show on 90... Where you start talking. Here's the music we play whenever a white guy calls. There's a magic in the early morning we find... Just want to balance it out. We do the black thing and we do the white thing. When the sunrise smiles on everything around... Scroll. It's the theme to Eight is Enough. It's a portrait of the happy I'd rather hear the old guy sing. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, it is enough to fill our lives with love. Hello? Are you still there? He's gone. Wow. He got a theme song. He hung up. And he hung up on us. He hung up. Amazing. All right, we're playing Eight is Enough for you. Smith. Major Bill Smith. Too hot for television. Get your copy and get to know the real Smith. How do you like them f***ing apples, you greasy sucker? Not available in stores. A good goat will do that. The Don and Mike Show. All right, before we get our big call 100 here, and one dropout for strip trivia. Oh. Not the perfect game. It's not a David Wells. Karen, who said she looks like Jane Seymour. The problem, according to her, is that her husband went to work today. Uh And somebody at work said, hey, did you hear Donna Mike yesterday? They were talking to your wife, and she's going to go down there and get naked. Hey, wife's going to be naked. Hey. See? Hey. So she dropped out. So we have room for a (laughs) walk-up. Go that darla, down that darla, down Chicago, Chicago, I'll show you right All right, now listen, before we get into this, yes. trust me, this is going to be very annoying, because mm-hmm. I'm going to let it roll. Okay. This guy's singing 129 songs in a row. All right, I don't think that'll be very funny. <laughs> We've got other stuff, though. <laughs> We've got other stuff. Yeah. We got news on on Dave Weinlich, buddy. Ah, yes, the guy that married uh, right? the, the girl yeah. in the ceremony over the weekend. The freak, the guy that went that got married in the mall of Minneapolis. Yep. Uh-huh. Okay. Also, we didn't get to see it on the net yesterday, mm-hmm. but we do have the hospital where that lady is, where she let everything be shown on the internet, where she had the birth shown on the internet. Excellent. Right. So we did follow up on both of those from yesterday. Good. Mm-hmm. And th- listen, I, maybe we shouldn't even talk about this today. This. Lame list of the 100 all-time best movies. I was scanning it today. I went through objectively. I got three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nine, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. With eh, I get maybe thirty-five out of the 100 that I think deserve to be on this list. Anything prior to 1960, you would not Uh put on the list. I got a couple. Did you? I got a couple that might surprise you. Here's all I want to it's say. It's a wonderful about this. life you picked, right? That's yes. that's one that's on there. Sure. In 1946. Right. I can't wait for all of these people to die. <laughs> and by this, I don't mean the actors and no. I don't mean the actresses. No. I mean the people that are making this list. I can't wait until the oldest person on earth that's going to vote on one of these lists, <laughs> their frame of reference is like when movies started being in color, or more important, when movies started getting ratings. Do you know what you're saying? 
You're saying, but it won't matter then because you will be dead also. No, no, no. I will be alive. <laughs> no, you won't because well, the people that no, no, no. know these movies the people will that be are, dead. No, the people that are old enough to remember those movies right now, they're close to death. <laughs> I'm going to be here a while more. Those movies are... Anybody can remember those but, movies. Uh, no, no, no. But these old codgers, they hold on to them. So you think it's a bunch of seniors oh, that, listen, are, that are voting on this The list. American Film Institute? Was Patton on that, that list? Yes, but I think you'd... Like see, myself, you're going to be let down when you see all the good movies right. are at the way bottom end of the list. Mm -hmm. Okay? Like, Goodfellas is number 94. Right. Pulp Fiction is number 95. It's great wow. to see. Yeah. I, I kind of looked at it a different way. I thought it was great that Pulp Fiction... Finally, you know, made a list like that. And the I reason that was cool. Yeah. The reason that it did is out of maybe the thousand old farts that make this, <laughs> uh -huh. maybe a hundred of them are young enough to realize that Pulp Fiction is a great movie. Do you like old movies at all? No, <laughs> I, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> I mean, you, are there any that do you do you not watch them? Is that what it is? They suck because before you got to when they started rating movies, uh -huh. right? All the movies are so jive. All right, or uh, give me another one of those guys. Spencer Tracy. Spencer Tracy. Uh -huh. Right. It's you like ever watch? You ever watch Bridge Over the River Kwai? It's like watching Blondie. Did you ever watch the Blondie and Dagwood things when you were a kid? <laughs> right, black and white. Right. right? Yeah. Where Blondie would come home and Dagwood right. would be there and they'd talk and everything was happy. Like Leave It to Beaver. Yeah. Okay. No realism in these movies. That's why I can't get into it. And the Bridge on the River Kwai did not make my list. Uh, did it make the list uh, of the uh, Yeah, I'm sure it did. I'm sure it's on here somewhere. One of my favorites. Only 11 comedies out of that 100 movies. I'll tell you the old ones that I picked. Okay. Okay. Casablanca. But even that one, I'm what, wavering on. Why did you pick that one? Did you oh, pick that because, one just to no, be because my, or what? Because my wife had just called me mm -hmm. and said that she didn't have cancer. Right. So I was real happy. Okay. So I, I know she yeah. likes that movie. Yeah. Uh, and then... And again, this is shaky. Wizard of Oz. I could go either way on Wizard of Oz. But okay? most of us did grow up watching the Wizard of Oz, right? Or, you mm -hmm. know, from a kid, from a kid's perspective. Cool movie. The Godfather, of course. Yep. Godfather. Mm -hmm. Then I have It's a Wonderful Life. Right. Then I have Psycho, Star Wars, Chinatown. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. Two thousand one, Raging Bull, E. T. Bonnie and Clyde, Apocalypse Now. I got all the cool ones, man. Mm -hmm. Annie Hall, Godfather Part Two, Taxi Driver, Jaws, Amadeus. All right, here's one I'll give you. Sound of Music. Yeah. A mash. I pick Sound of Music. Mash. Mm -hmm. Raiders Lost Ark. Tootsie. Close Encounters. Silence of the Lambs Network. American Graffiti. Rocky. Deer Hunter. Platoon. Fargo. Easy Rider. Patton. Goodfellas, Pulp Fiction. Everything so else on this was on there. I was looking for it. Right? Everything else on this list blows. <laughs> I might as well give you the stuff I didn't pick. Here are the movies that I think really suck. Okay. okay. First, so overrated, Citizen Kane. Uh, uh, man, that's like that's like one of the greatest movies ever made. Piece of crap. It I, I not, it does not hold my attention. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then Casablanca. I picked the one. Okay. Right. Gone with the wind. We can agree. Yeah, hate fun. it. I think vastly overrated. Mm -hmm. Never seen it. Lawrence of Arabia, boring. That's not a bad movie. It's not one of the hundred best ever. <laughs> the Graduate. Again, you know what's wrong with The Graduate? Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce right. me. The Graduate was made twenty years too early mm -hmm. because they, they they don't show you anything. They Trailblazing. Don't, they don't get into it like you could today. So right. no, I say no. It's not one of the hundred best. <laughs> On the waterfront. P you, <laughs> you didn't like on the waterfront. No. What's my, you know something you don't have? What's where's your taste? <laughs> where the hell is your taste? Schindler's List. Listen, when I go to the movies, I don't want to be depressed out of my mind. But it's it's one of the greatest movies ever made. Hey. Not to me. It's a bummer, man. <laughs> I didn't like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm singing in the rain. You're not supposed to like. You're not supposed to like it, though. You know, you're yeah. not necessarily supposed to to really like feel good about it. You, you know, the fact that you that's felt that's what bad, I want in the movies. That's what. See, he was going. Right. He was going for feeling bad. You Forget know? about. You want to feel bad? Open the door and go outside. Uh, 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 uh. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Come live in my house for a week. You okay. want to feel bad? Uh, then I've got. Uh, let's see. What did I pick? Singing in the rain. Sunset Boulevard, Bridge on the River Kwai, Some Like It Hot, All About Eve, The African Queen. You can burn all of these movies as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> oh, dear. Really, Grapes of Wrath. Uh, I read the book. It sucks. Uh, Maltese Falcon, mm -hmm. 
Dr. Strangelove, no, Mr. Smith goes to Washington, treasurer of the Sierra Madre, come on. You didn't on. like Mr. Smith goes to Washington? No, it's well, just Jimmy like Shore? it's just like the Christmas one, except he's a different guy. Well, see, that's why you like it. It's a Wonderful Life, and that's exactly what it is. Very similar to that. Right. Tre Treasure of the Sierra Madre is the movie. The line came from badges. We don't need no stinking badges. It's not one of the hundred best of all time. Which I don't think. Great, was. great Humphrey Bogart right. movie. High Noon, forget it. Kill a Mockingbird. That's, it happened one night. That Kill a Mockingbird, one of my favorite movies. Yeah. <laughs> Midnight Cowboy, overrated. <laughs> best years of our lives. Double Indemnity. Doctor Shivago. Oh, that's a boring movie. North by Northwest, White West Side Story. Yeah, that's believable. Gangs get out and do perfectly choreographed numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, these movies, I can't Natalie wait. Wood, real hottie in that, you know, plays Maria in the West Side Story. 30 years from now, they're going to come out with a list like this, and it's going to have movies like Ernest Goes to Camp on it, okay? <laughs> oh, and dear. the very rare item will be one of these old fart movies that somehow manages to hold on. Is this too self-indulgent to continue no. to read the list of movies that no, I hate? No, no, I, I think it's That don't belong. King Kong, Birth of a Nation, Street Kong Named Desire, Clockwork Orange, Snow White, Butch Cassidy, Philadelphia Story, Here to Eternity. They all suck. <laughs> all Quiet on the Western Front, Third Man, Fantasia, Rebel Without a Cause, Vertigo, Stagecoach, Manchurian Candidate, American in Paris, Shane, French Connection. Oh, I should have picked that one. French Connection, great That's movie. That's a good yeah. one. Forrest Gump. No way. We agree about Forrest Gump. Ben Hur, right? <laughs> oh, Withering man, Heights. Think, uh, just a second. Just one second. <laughs> Don't blow by Ben Hur. <laughs> blow. You said blow by. <laughs> uh, Withering Heights. Gold Rush dances with wolves. <laughs> oh. What the hell is the Gold Rush? What is that? I'm not. 1925. Familiar. Mike. My Charlie. God. Charlie Chaplin. Yeah, I'm think. sure it holds up real good. <laughs> uh, City Lights. Wild Bunch. Giant. Duck Soup. Mutiny on the Bounty. Frankenstein. Jazz singer. I like the Neil Diamond jazz singer better. <laughs> My Fair Lady. Oh, hate that. A Place in the Sun, The Apartment. Searchers Bringing a Baby, Unforgiven. Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. And Yankee Doodle Freakin' Dandy. Love Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. <laughs> stinks. <laughs> it stinks. <laughs> they all, they're all lousy. I really, I've seen a lot of these lists, and this list, compared to a lot of them, is better because they have modernized it. And it used yeah. to be you would have hated this list ten times more than you But you know what it is? It is a tip of the hat to the modern era. Mm -hmm. Look at here, Mike. You can tell with my intricate system of, of marking the movies I like with a dot. Right. You'll see that the dots fall predominantly in the third category, which right. is the la Like, you mean to tell me Fargo is the 84th best movie of all time? You mean to tell me that some movie called Modern Times that came out in 1936? Never saw Modern Times. Of course. And soon, all of the people that did see it will be dead, and then they will not vote for it anymore. <laughs> soon, the, w the world will be full of people that dig what we dig. Did you, uh, did you ever, you've seen The Bridge Over the River Kwai, right? Yeah, my dad made me watch that movie. You didn't like it? You know, it's really a good war movie. It's like every war movie, though, man. Yeah, but it's better than every war movie. It's real. It's a good war movie. And you know something? They have a bit of realism in there because but, you know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna defend older movies for a second. There are a lot of movies that that when it would have looked when they were all in that POW camp. That's fine. You can be Jethro Tull, <laughs> living in the past. <laughs> you know, I want to see it now. Computer enhancement. Do Alec it. Alec Guinness stands up there and he realizes... Uh, I'd rather he, see Alec Baldwin. <laughs> He's standing over there and he says, My God, what have I done? I mean, what a, what a moment. Yeah. What there's a moment. So, there's so many modern movies that should be on this list. Not one movie with Albert Brooks. On this list. How could that be? Yeah. I agree. I think that uh, Lost in America, yes. as far as a comedy, it right. should have been on there. I think Absolutely. it's a classic comedy. Unfortunately, most of the people that like Lost in America are like under 60. Animal House should be on this list. Oh, yes. it yep. definitely. There's a million that should be Blues Brothers. I mean, you know, we could Some waste of those a, Monty Python movies should yeah. be on this we list. We could waste a whole, a whole show talking about what should be on. Just wait. 30 years, let's all meet back here. When all these people are dead, and this list will totally change. <laughs> but then we'll Citizen be... Kane, you're going down. <laughs> <laughs> Rosebud. <laughs> and then we'll be Rosebud. old, and somebody will be wishing we were dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, Buzz. That's, and, the, and the world will continue, and yeah. life, life will go on. See, but the thing is, they'll be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 hold on. <laughs> How could you possibly... See, the thing is, those movies are jive. They suck. <laughs> 30 years from now, you're going to look at Pulp Fiction or Goodfellas. You're going to say... What else could they have done? Mm, you never know. You never know. Right? You know, society changes. 
You know, you could be looking at Pulp Fiction seriously a hundred years from now, and people say, what the hell is that Pulp Fiction? Well, it's a hundred years from now, Mike. Everything might change in a hundred years. Fifty years people could be doing that. Yeah. It could happen. Fifty years Pulp Fiction will still be cool. You know what you're doing? You're sounding just like everybody's father would sound. You're, you're, you're saying that your era, right now when the movies came out, is the best. It's a fact. <laughs> They're more realistic. There's cussing, there's nudity, there's violence, they show everything. You know, in 50 years, conceivably, they could go back to not showing violence and nudity, and you would be sitting there saying, you know, in my day, they used to show nudity uh, and have a guy's head get blown off, and then people that are like tw change. 12 years old will be looking, oh man, listen things, to that old folks. Things, <laughs> listen, things in that regard will ever change. I imagine 30 years from now, They'll be doing the network news naked. <laughs> Tom Brokaw will be sitting there. Tom Brokaw Jr. will be sitting out there with his, with his wiener out of his pants going, good evening. That might be wishful thinking. I'm not sure, but I'm with you on it. Right? Soon all of these, all of these different standards are coming down. <laughs> so anyway. So this angered you, this, uh, this list. Oh, you could tell. A little yeah, bit. Yes, it's funny. Yeah, and they, the big, some big stupid three-hour special last night. Right. On CBS. Right. Gee, I wonder why CBS is getting its ass kicked in the ratings. <laughs> they wasted three beautiful hours on that show last night, right. showing all these old clips from, like, King Kong. Mm -hmm. King Kong sucks. You know something? <laughs> I just realized. He's so fakey, man. That's when my dish froze. It was Anne Bancroft from The Graduate, and they were showing a scene from it, and that's when she... I looked at a still of Anne Bancroft for like half an hour wow. because my dish had been fried by lightning. Wow. Maybe it was her face that did it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, Don and Mike show. Hello? Yeah, um, I have uh, two things. One, yes. he was Mike on that, uh, his, that list, the 100 thing list. But I sure, easy position to take. Stand by the classics. <laughs> it's all right. I yeah, always, right. I always not, like that. I'm not going out on any limbs here. No. I always like that when I say something like that. And immediately people call up right away. Hey, yeah, Mike, <laughs> right on. <laughs> way to go, Mike. Listen, I'll tell you. Hey, I'm not doing it for any ulterior motive. This is the way, this is the way I'm talking about. Lots of good movies on this list. And, uh, you know, we agree to disagree. Yeah, except that I think if push came to shove, yes, if given the choice, I'm just talking about movies. Not all of them do I think. You know, not all the. You know, for example, Casablanca, good movie, but it's not a movie that when it's on, I, I run to see it. But there are a lot of old movies on this list that, list that I'll actually stop and what watch. What about the Citizen Kane? Would you stop and watch that piece of trash? Well, that's my wife's favorite. One of my wife's favorite. But we're movies. talking about you, though. Now, me, I don't know. I mean, you know, I really have never sat down because I can't find it and I don't go out and rent it so I'm probably no I'm not, I'll be honest with you no same with a movie like Schindler's List I love Schindler's List I think it's <laughs> one of the greatest movies ever made I really do I think it's really one of the most moving <laughs> so good, unbelievable listen, movies ever made I'm not going to give I'm, I'm not disputing that mm -hmm. but I'm saying if you're sitting at home you go hey what's on oh Schindler's List oh <laughs> listen get some Triscuits get some nachos <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay. Hello, not a Mike show. Or maybe in your house. I don't know. Hello. Not in mine. I, I love to eat when I watch a movie. Uh -huh. and I, I, can't, I, can, I can't eat when I'm all bummed out. I can eat during a good horror movie, though. Sure. Yeah, horror movies are, you know, you can chow down, have a nice pizza when you're watching Jason put, like, an arrowhead through somebody's throat. It makes you hungry. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Hi, how are you? Hey, fine. Good. Uh, they, they didn't leave, uh, they didn't put a lot of comedies on this damn thing. A Shot in the Dark should have been there, and even Reservoir Dogs. What's a shot in the dark? That's Pete, uh, that's the uh, Peter Sellers movie where he's the first Clouseau, real good uh, acting job. First Pink Panther movie? Yeah, it was second one. Wouldn't make my list, buddy. <laughs> Oh, Do you remember the scene in the Pink Panther movie? It's the funniest scene that he ever did. No. <laughs> Where he's on the parallel bars. <laughs> Do you remember that one? And, he, and he's on the parallel bars. All right. I shouldn't even say it because it's slapstick, and slapstick does not translate well when you're trying to explain it. But he just does a dismount, and he does it on the wrong side, and there's a stairwell, and it made me laugh. I'm sorry. It's my favorite moment in a Peter Sellers movie, and I laughed out loud, and now now you're going to give me that look, no. and I will, I will just shut up. That's I will, funny. I will shut up. That's funny. Hey, Mike. That's funny. Hello. I would like you, Bloom. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hello. I was trying to go. That to was you. Peter Sellers calling from his current home. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Radio God. Hi there. Hey, they didn't put any Eastwood movies on there. No, they had that one where he was the cowboy. Oh, did they? Unforgiven. It's number 98. Yeah, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly was the best spaghetti western ever made. 
Uh, so that, yeah, and also they didn't include anything by Mel Brooks, Blazing Saddles, or Young Frankenstein, which to me... Oh, correct. Yeah. Young Frankenstein should have been on yes. this. Yeah. Right. Trump and again, over, yeah. Mike, that's nothing more than the age factor. <laughs> yeah. Please believe me. Hey, I would be more that there are a lot of movies here that, that I would bump off this list to make room for other movies. Yeah. I will give you that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, listen. There. Thank you for letting me have that rant now. <laughs> My wife doesn't have to hear that tonight when I go home. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Now. Oh, yeah. Let's hear this guy sing. Okay. Chicago, Chicago, <laughs> that darling, down that darling, down Chicago, Chicago, I'll show you around, I'll show you around. This guy's name, oh, oh Nicky Knockers is here, we're going to have to break. Oh, what a shame, what a shame we can't, we, we, we can't listen to this guy anymore. This guy's name is Jack Modarian. I just want to say, I just want to say, oh, they don't. And let me just read you the back label of his CD, okay? Okay. Yes. Oh, Jack Modarian loves to sing. Yes, it's he as does. simple as that. Sure. Ask him to sing, and sing he will. Claim a, claiming a repertoire of almost as many songs as Frank Sinatra, mm -hmm. we recently challenged him to sing for 45 minutes continuously. Armed with a handheld cassette recorder and a 90-minute tape, we stepped out on the back porch of the duplex nursing home in Boston, where he lived. Clear June afternoon, weather perfect, birds can be heard singing in the trees. This is the unedited recording of Jack's 129-song medley. Wow. Okay. Chicago, Chicago, <laughs> that darling, down that darling, down Chicago, Chicago, I'll show you right, I'll show you right. Oh, let, me, let me give you something else. Okay, yeah, because we've, we've heard that one. That's just the first one. That's on the, his classic. On the CD. <laughs> and they all go seamlessly from right. one song to the next. We went through the air with the greatest of these. Oh, yeah, it is the man on the flying trapeze. Why were you? School days, school days, oh dear, oh, go the rules. <laughs> Already get right to get rid but they oh also the tune of a critic. See we can't squeeze this into a short segment. <laughs> So we were a couple of kids, or they go to the ball game, or they go to the park. Oh, buy me some beaters and crackers, Jack. All right, well, you get the, uh, <laughs> yeah. you get the idea. It goes, it goes on and on. And 45 on. minutes straight. Yep. And maybe sometime we'll have the 45 minutes to play all of it. I hope it'll be soon. Yeah. When we uh, get back from our uh, break here, Mike, we'll meet our male and female contestants for today's big round of sure trivia. I think that sounds like a good idea. Okay, we're coming right back. <laughs> this is the Dawn and Mike Show. Ninety-eight point one, the peak, WPEK. <gasps> to relax before a big meeting, psychologists say take deep breaths. But if you're already hyperventilating, how helpful is that? Or they say visualize your audience in their underwear. Whoa! No. You chose me, so you recognize the skills. And I don't want nobody calling me son or kid or sport or nothing like that. Cool. Cool. Whatever you say, slick. But I need to tell you something about all your skills. As of right now, they mean precisely dick. Time for more great skits. Here's Don and Mike. All right, let's do a touch tone here. Let's clear out these lines. We aren't on? No. Hmm. Well, Cletus, turn your radio up to make sure. <laughs> I, know, I know we normally say turn your radio down, right? right? Yeah. Turn it up. You guys aren't on. What are they running? Some 70s music, man. Uh, you know, it could be sunspots again. Yeah. Hey, you know, as jive as it sounds, you would think by the time you got to a network, and yep. listen, don't laugh. Westwood One is a network. Yes, it is. As much as we like to say they're not, they are. When you get these things called sunspots, even though it's not sunny here where we're doing the show, it looks like it's going to rain again. Right. The sun would effectively be behind the clouds right now. Yes, sunspots, for some reason, they like shut down. I bet we're off the network. Is that why everybody's calling? I always thought that sunspots were the reason that Bob Barker needed hand makeup. Wild. Wild stuff. It's wild. There listen, I, we'll check into it. I bet it's just a technical problem. Thank you, though. Okay, thanks. All right, bye-bye. Ha. We wouldn't know Dick if it wasn't for the people that listen to this show. Yeah, out in the bluegrass state. Yeah, Hello, true. Donna Mike. Yeah, I need some help from Donna Mike if I could. I'm sure. Hello, you're on the air. Hmm. Oh, hey, this is Don. Uh, my brother Cheech called the other day. Anyway, the reason I'm calling is because my wife, my young wife of 25, 
Uh, I think is interested in another woman uh, if she had the opportunity and enough alcohol in her. Now, should I feel, what, what should I do about this? Should I oblige or should I just let this pass? Are you going to be in are you, magazines? Are you going to be involved? You know, I, I don't know. Because I, you know, I feel like she'd be cheating on me. You know what I mean? Really, she with a woman? to be involved. Hmm. Hmm. I think, listen, I, I don't have a handbook on this, but I'm pretty sure if your wife does it with another woman, it's not cheating. Huh. Well, how do, you, how do you know that? I'm just telling you. That's, you know, it's like a tie goes to the runner. It's not cheating if you're there. Hey, and let me yeah. just say this also. Uh -huh. As yeah. a generic rule, mm -hmm. eating ain't cheating. <laughs> All right? I learned that from our president, okay? That's right. Yeah. Remember? Like Bill Clinton? Much, yeah. yeah, eating ain't cheating. Eating ain't cheating. No, hey, but... She, uh, she looks at the magazines, the filthy magazines. That turns her on. She How does she, uh, <laughs> does she get the filthy magazines from you? No, no, no. She, uh, she'll she go and pick them up and say, hey, listen, let's read this together. And All right, let's analyze. What are the dirty magazines that your wife is buying? Let's find yeah. out what genre of pornography she's into. There you all go. right. You, you, are you familiar with Forum magazine? We're familiar with all of them. Forum is yeah, the one well, that has all letters, well, right? Let, yeah, the, the let, kind let, of letters uh, where you're in the drugstore. I was in the drugstore uh, the other day. Uh -huh. Incidentally, I'm 17 inches. When suddenly, <laughs> you know, that's hey, the kind of letter you get in there. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Not that we've read those letters, though. Right. Uh, not right. that we're experts on that or anything. Not that we haven't poured over those letters. <laughs> she, she really enjoys it. Uh, and, so she uh, what, she enjoys what? The written stuff, not the pictures, the written word? Well, she, she reads, and then she looks at the picture to kind of correspond with each other, you know? What other, uh, uh, what other sources of smut has she brought into, <laughs> your, into your Christian home? You know, it's a, it's a non-Christian home, I must say. Okay. Uh, I, I, what kind? Uh, we're talking about Forum. We're talking about Penthouse. Playboy right. was just not enough risque for her. She right. likes to see, uh, you know, camel toes and this and that. Yes. And uh, I, I'm, I'm concerned, and I'm also uh, uh, let me, excited. Let me, all, right. all right, let's see. Let's check the level. Has she ever gotten Gallery Magazine? You know, Swank. Uh, we have paged together through Gallery Cherie. Magazine. The big H, oh, Hustler. Yeah, yeah. Has she brought oh, yeah. Hus Has she brought Hustler into your home? No, I have brought it to her. How about, Thank you very much. How about Club? Club is as exciting. As Did well. we have we? Yeah. We. We. No. O U I. We. Oh, no, no, no. We don't have we. <laughs> All right. We have. Hold on, I'm con I'm confused here because Swank. <laughs> that's that's, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's the worst. You, I need your help. I'm confused God. as well. Well, you know, at first you said your wife was bringing the pornography into the house. Then you just said you brought Hustler in, uh -huh. and Hustler is like, you know, it's uh, oh, it's, the, it's, it's the, the Dalai Lama of porno, man. It's the pen light. I, I know, but listen, Hustler was months ago. <laughs> it's Jesus. the pen light, you know, where they uh, actually use the pen light to get the actual <laughs> close-ups. Right, it might as well be a medical journal. Hustler should be. Uh, hey, yeah, I know. She works for a veterinarian, so... Uh, she's into that medical type of thing. You've got you know I mean? so much information that yeah. you're sharing well, yeah. with us. You're just opening well, your yeah. whole life up. Yeah. Right? Now, listen, hold on a second. You can't I'm use sorry. that language. Who are you talking about? Who'd you call an a-hole? Oh, this jerk is behind me, and uh, he wanted in, and he's with his girlfriend being a tough guy. You know what I mean? Mike, we got Mr. Issues on the phone. This yes. guy's got lots no, of no, issues. You know what? I'm in a great, fantastic mood. You yeah. guys cheer right. me up. And yeah, you've got some uh, help here. So you got a lot of uh, you've got a lot of unresolved issues. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, g give me some guidance, will you? Do you think your wife is attracted to the animals that she works with? <laughs> oh, you know, I, that we have not discussed, and I don't think so. Has she brought a, ever brought a magazine into your house, such as Dog Lover? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We we do that. Do you think your wife is satisfied with you? Oh, absolutely. Really? No doubt about it. I've had a vasectomy, so, you know, uh, when you have that... You know, it's like this guy, in this guy just yeah. keeps piling stuff yeah. on top. Let's go. This is a big <laughs> bucket with eggs on top of it now. Can I, yeah. can I tell you guys one thing? I, I love you guys. You guys are great. I'm in Sacramento right now, so... I'd like to explore your need to share all this information with us. Where does it come from? You know, they never asked that question on the Springers and on the Monte. They That's never true. really asked the question, why? And, and I, I'd love to have that answered. Why? Why do you have this desire to, uh, to, to share all of this with us? Well, I told you, I needed some guidance, and I don't know whether I feel uh, excited about this or should I feel uh, insecure uh, or, or what. Listen, don't take this personally. I can't believe how stupid people are. 
that people Here we call go to me? that people will call. No, no, hold on. Take yourself out oh. of it. The oh. people will call a radio show mm -hmm. and ask a disc jockey yeah. for advice on real life situations. And I'm gonna I'm not even talking about. It. I'm I'm gonna count in now all the stupid radio psychologists. Like, oh, uh, I pull my hair out when I listen <laughs> to Doctor Laura. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, because it here's makes me sick to my stomach. Listen, hold on. Here's the average call to Doctor Laura. It's always something that's like, Doctor Laura. A friend of mine has had an abortion, and I don't know if I should be her friend anymore because I don't agree with her. <laughs> right? And then, then instead of saying something like, well, those decisions are left to whoever, you know, and right. she's your friend, Dr. Laura, her opinion is, you know, F her. Right. Forget her. Mm -hmm. She's not in your life anymore. Okay, that's, that's the first call. They sure. get thousands of calls like that. Right. Then they get the calls like, Dr. Laura, <laughs> my husband is late coming home at night, and he says he's working late. <laughs> and then she'll go, all right, well, is he working late? Well, yes, yes, he is. <laughs> you know, and, and a lot of times they'll call it... <laughs> and the people yeah. that call her show, the people that call her show are inane because they right. call with ridiculous situations that... A newborn infant I should the, be able to figure out. They, they ask the questions that are the most obvious. I think a lot of the people that call those shows, perhaps they think that's where they can get advice. But then there are a lot of other people, and I'm going to put this caller in the category, that, that do so. Oh, thanks. Where thanks the great, a lot. Where, Hold well, on, you please. Don't even know, Hold on you don't second. even know what I've said yet. Hold on a second. I'm saying I'm that, that, that you're getting a tremendous amount of, it's kind of a rush for you. You, you, you know, really don't is. want advice. It is, and I need some uh, some feedback from some folks that, that uh, think no. the way that oh, I... No, 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 listen, no, you no. we're not, we're not going to give you callers now. I mean, no, we're not going to, no. like, turn this into an open line show. No, no, no. You, you're enjoying no, the process right now. I'm talking about you two. You guys know what's going on out there. And, <laughs> Why, listen, hold on. Why, our wives aren't into porno. Oh, Darn it. On. I don't think. Stop. I wish. Oh. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, you know, they don't, they don't tell you everything, you know. Dr. Laura. My wife hates porno, and I have tried and tried and tried and tried. Sometimes oh, I would sorry. just like to slap Dr. Laura. Here's the one that I hate. <laughs> Dr. Laura, you know, she is such a tight ass. <laughs> she is such yeah. a tight... Listen, like, she's going to call like this. Dr. Laura, there is a family reunion this weekend, and my nephew, Billy, lives with a woman. They are not married. Yet they're going to be coming to the reunion this weekend, and I... It goes against my beliefs. And, nah, 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 nah. and then instead of telling this woman, shut up, you idiot. Either go to the stupid thing or don't go to the stupid thing. This is a stupid call that has nothing to do with it. She entertains the call. And then she ends up telling her, yeah, that's right. Don't go. <laughs> don't go because someone is living with someone. Nice. Hell, hey. Hello, 1998. Yeah. Hello. Hey guys, uh, I can't. Oh, my stop it. He, he, all that guy wanted was yeah. to hear his voice on the radio. I can't believe that it's finally filtered down to where people are actually wanting advice mm -hmm. is from disc jockeys. <laughs> sure. Right? Doesn't anybody know disc jockeys, and I include myself and Mike and everybody from the bottom to the top. Right. Disc jockeys are guys that can't find real jobs. <laughs> right? Amen, brother. Right? Amen. That's Why do you want advice? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I believe, in my humble opinion, the greatest pearl of wisdom ever shared on this show yep. has just been spewed forth. That is exactly the truth. <laughs> Why would you possibly want advice from someone who's doing this as a way to get out of doing something real. It boggles my mind, I swear to God. Here we are. Here we are. And you can put a lot of people in that category. Oh, I too. mean, everybody. Yeah. You the go experts, from... experts, the so-called experts. You know, it's amazing. Right. You get that old feed Paul Harvey. Let's see him try to make a Big Mac. He couldn't do it. He couldn't sure. work in McDonald's. That tub of lard, Rush Limbaugh. I mean, same thing. What job could Rush Limbaugh sure. pro possibly have? DJ, DJ, Rush Limbaugh. That's simply it. a DJ that got a good line of BS and milked it for all it was worth. Right. For no, listen. 
We're no better than carnies. No, we're carnies. That's what it is. I mean, we're the kind of people. Would you walk up to the guy that will guess your weight for a quarter? <laughs> Would you walk up to him and ask him advice about your wife bringing a lesbian into the house? No. <laughs> you won't even shake that guy's hand. Best skill. And we have. We, yeah. Carnies have it. We have it. The best skill. Convincing you that we know what we're talking about. <laughs> right. When we have absolutely no idea. <laughs> yep. Right. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, here's another guy. That Count between the U.S. and the Soviet Union when I was in the Air Force about 10 years ago. Swank magazine? Yeah, it was a Swank magazine. Uh, I was stationed in West Berlin, and when we would travel back and forth between West Berlin and West Germany, we had to go through the Russians because of the post-war rules. Well, we would trade every now and then with the Russian border guards with, like, you know, cigarettes or money or whiskey or something. For Swank Magazine? Well, I went through and I got some hat pins, some of the big hat pins you see on their big furry hats. <laughs> and I, I paid them 20 mark, 20 east, 20 west marks, a Bic lighter, and a Swank girly magazine. <laughs> Wow. Swank, thank you, my friend. <laughs> that's, it, it, that's probably made the rounds, and I'd imagine ended up in Gorbachev's death. <laughs> that's funny, paying for, for like, okay, hey, I want one of those uh, Russian souvenirs. Here, comrade, here is your Swank magazine. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> Hello. Hello, you are on the air. Oh, I called to get my birthday spankings. Oh, baby. All right. Yes. Yeah, hold oh, on, hold on. We got to get right to this because I want to set up a contest we're doing early today. Mm -hmm. Remember yesterday we were talking about Yoko Ono and we were talking about Ringo? Yeah. All right, we brought in her record. <laughs> oh, good. And today, on the heels of that, Chicago, Chicago, on the heels of that guy, uh -huh. uh, today, Dynamite Music Spotlight on Yoko Ono. Talked about her uh, yesterday, and uh, today we're going to share her incredible musical stylings. <laughs> yes. Hello, Sharon? Yes. How old are you today? 31. 31. Ooh. <laughs> is there a hard wooden chair nearby? Yes, there is. I have it reserved just for you. For you? today. I had this set up for months. Pull down your pants, please. Is there any way we can gag her while we're doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Will you pull down your pants? Okay, they're down. How about your underpants? They're down. You're not the uh, lady who does the voice of Baby Bop, are you? Baby Bop? All right. No, I'm sorry. Just wondering. All right, all right. It's <laughs> Harry, Harry Hamlin time. Here we go. I'll be using the ice pick on you, Sharon. Are you ready? Yes, I'm yeah, ready. Okay, all right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fifteen. Don, I'd like to make a special request. I don't want to throw anybody a curveball. Could someone get out the jackhammer, though? I'd like to use the jackhammer for my turn this time. I, I'm going to make a special uh, exemption here. Got it, Mike. Are you ready? And uh, this, this is going to be uh, 15 through 30, and then we'll finish with 31. Are you ready? Okay. All right, honey. Ow! Ow! There you go. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 28, 29, 30, 31. There. There you go. How do you like having great. your buttocks jackhammered? That was great. <laughs> An ice pick. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. No, bye. No, bye. Bye. Hi, Don and Mike show. The nanny calling. Hello. Hello. I, I need some advice from Don and Mike. Right. Why won't Buzz come home? <laughs> Pilar, all right, this is it. Yes. You're on restriction. Oh, no. You're on super double secret it's, probation. It's just like bingo. No, just like... Butter just like, bingo with raisin for Mike. Just like Bobby Singh. <laughs> Mike likes my... Butter. And Gladys Kravitz. What about Denise? <laughs> What about what? De uh, Dennis? Dennis. Dennis Murphy? No, Dennis has an open an open line to the show. But Pilar. You're on Buzz. restriction now, sir. You only have one last chance to say something to Buzz Burbank. Goodbye. Buzz. Yes, Philhar. I miss you. <laughs> I miss you, too. <laughs> Goodbye. See you in July. You know, was that the real Pilar? No. Pilar no. always says, come back to Florida. Yes, that's not the Doesn't real Doesn't matter. Pilar. They're all banned now. Oh, there Imposter. you go. Pilar and all of his copycats out there. <laughs> the copycats. Hello, Donna Mike. Hey, what do you say? Hey, buddy. Hey, I want a spanking, man. Well, yeah, what do you think, I'm a homo? Yeah, I am. A, I'm a homo. I want a spanking. Oh, you're not a yeah. homo. Come on, you're not a homo. Hey, I'm as gay as they get. No way. I am, too. Give me my spanking. I want it now. Describe your boyfriend to me. My boyfriend is a big, gnarly, six foot six, 280-pound dude. And if you don't spank my ass, I'm going to have to call him to do it. <laughs> Please describe um, all the things you enjoy doing with him. 
Can I do that on the radio? <laughs> sure. Can I talk about the... Well, I can't say that on the radio. There you go. See? All right, called your bluff on that you one. Got <laughs> <laughs> you got him. How about my spanking, man? Yeah, I'll spank you. Talk about the curvature of your boyfriend's buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, he can't yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah he can't right. do it. <laughs> Later. That's all right, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Say so I that guy with a homo. That's uh -huh. a good way to call that bluff. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hello, I want to speak to Dr. Mike and Dr. Dawn. Yeah. Faye, how are you? Faye Weber. You? Hey, Faye Weber. How you doing, sweetheart? I'm doing great. I'm calling to wish a happy Father's Day, both of you dearly. Oh, and we thank you for that, Faye. And get a good present from your wife. Oh, thank you, Faye. You're so sweet. I love you both. Oh, we love you, Faye. How's Seymour doing? He's doing fine. He's waiting for his gift. He's waiting for his Father's Day gift. Oh, yes. That's great. It once a year. You going to give him a great gift, Faye? I'm going to try. All right. You'll give him some poontang? I'm going to use the pill instead of him. You're going to use the pillow instead of the him? The pill, pill. The pill. pill. You're going to use the pill instead of him? Instead of his pill. Him taking the pill. Uh -huh. You're going to take Seymour's medication? I'll take it and see if it works. Oh, the, the, the Viagra. Oh, Viagra. Viagra. <laughs> oh, Viagra. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Faye Weber with a Viagra joke. Faye Weber. I got you there. You got Faye it, Weber. There. Right here. Isn't she marvelous? You're wonderful, Faye. Thank you, Faye. Uh -huh. Faye, tell Seymour we said have a great Father's I Day. I sure will. Have fun. All right. Okay, bye now. Bye, Faye. <laughs> Now, I just want to show all of our problem callers, mm -hmm. Faye Weber, who I'm very proud of. Faye was a problem caller for a while. Yes, she was. I'll define Faye's problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was actually two phases. Mm -hmm. First, she called too much. Right. And second, whenever she called, mm -hmm. she would really put the hurt on us to give her some prizes. We actually yeah. took Faye and Seymour years and years ago on a trip and then gave her another prize. For a while there, every time she would call, it would be when we were doing some kind of contest mm -hmm. and she would win a prize. Mm -hmm. And now, even now, I think that in some way, yes. she wanted a sympathy prize. Right. Sorry, Faye, that's tough love. Did you notice that, you know, I hope your wives give you nice presents for, <laughs> and, and then, you know, well, Faye, how would you like, you know, and... and yeah. She's a sweet lady. Yeah, but it ain't gonna happen. Everybody needs discipline, Mike. Right, absolutely. <laughs> tough <Look> love. <laughs> Faye Weber is a success story. Mm -hmm. Scared straight. Yeah. <laughs> Faye Weber doesn't call us every day anymore. She doesn't ask for prizes anymore. No. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hi, uh, can I talk to Donna Mike? You're on the air right now. Can I get a date with Jimmy the intern? Jimmy the intern is long gone. Oh, he is? We are so many past Jimmy the intern. Jimmy the intern was replaced by Cannon. She okay. And then she, she doesn't care. care. She was focused on Jimmy the intern. And now we have Christine back there. That's yeah. right. Beautiful Christine answering our phones. Christine, who uh, replaced Cannon. Hello, yeah. Donna Mike Show. <laughs> right. I... I'm going to stop laughing at that because there's an outside shot. You know, no, it's the same guy that called yesterday with the I, pussy tapes. I hope to God it's not a real cat. Hello, yeah. doll. You hope it's a pretty good story from Steve. Yeah. All right, now here's Mike. His story is that he found pictures of his mom and dad having sex. Oh, God. Hello, Mike. How you doing? Doing great, thank you. Yes, um, about when I was when I was about 15 years old, my sister and I were home one day, and we were going through the old photo albums, and we found this small one. We opened it up, and first page, with first page, we see a picture of my dad, buck naked, laying on the bed, holding himself, holding his holding his thing, holding his unit. <laughs> And then, was, uh, hold on. Was he aroused? Yes, he was. Oh, oh my God. Oh, 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 my God. Here. All right, we might have a winner here. I think we do. Yeah. All right, then what happened? Oh, there was other pictures, pictures of my mother in there, um, laying on the bed in, like, doggy positions and stuff like that. <laughs> and now all these years have gone by, you never brought this up with your mom and dad? No, never brought it up. Still on good terms with your mom and dad? Yeah. They live in um, Seattle area. Uh, yeah. I live here you know, in the D.C. area. I can relate. I can see why you wouldn't want to bring yeah, that up to that'd mom be and dad. Tough. And, that'd yeah. be pretty tough. Thanksgiving or Christmas um, here. <laughs> so, so were there actually pictures of your mom and dad having sex? Yes. Oh. Who do you think took those pictures? I I think they uh, set them up on a timer on the uh, tripod. Ah. A little timer on the tripod. And uh, you stumbled on these. Did you ever see, uh, after you, you made that initial discovery, did you ever see any other pictures of your parents? No. Can't say that I have. <laughs> okay, hold on there, Mike. You know what? Mm, yeah. We need our lines. I'm going to let this guy Steve go. Okay? Steve? Okay. Yeah. Steve, um, 
Hold on, I'll give you some kind of a prize. Oh, okay, cool. Hold, hold on a second there, Steve. But his story was the story about finding the pictures of mom. Right. There's not going to be anything better. There's not going to be anything. I don't no. see any way that, that Mike's story can be bad. Right. <laughs> Let's find out. Here's John. Hey, Johnny. Hey, now. Johnny, hey, buddy. What is your story, sir? <laughs> Uh, the story is, uh, uh, father's uh, girlfriend uh, bumped into her in town a couple of years after they had long since broken up and um, ended up spending the weekend with her. <laughs> so you banged a girl that was your dad's old girlfriend? Yeah. Mm. I might keep, I might yeah, keep I you as a reserve. Summer of 42. I was 19. She was like 45. All right. I might keep you as a reserve because <laughs> you've never mentioned to your dad that you both have shared the same woman? No. No, okay. All right, good. All right, very good. All right, listen. Let's keep that guy. So we've got three now, right? We've got Jim in Reno. Yeah. Who did his mom and dad's neighbor. That's right. And then there's John in Virginia who slept with one of his dad's girlfriends. And Mike, right. the guy that found the naked pictures of mom and dad. Right? Having sex. There you go. Yeah, that's the one we'll go with. <laughs> Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hello. Hello. Hello, you're on the air. This last chance to come up with something better. Hello. Oh, your radio's up too loud. Oh, bummer. Ah, oh, forget about it. Hello, Don and Mike show. Yeah, I can beat that. I got movies. You, got, you don't have movies. I got no, movies. You don't. Oh, you don't have movies. Yes, Come I on. do. Oh, no, right. you don't. One last, I'll just take one last line, and then we're going to go with this guy, uh, Mike. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hi, Don and Mike. Hi there. Hi, my name's Melissa, and I have a story for you. Yes, Melissa. Okay, I was 15 years old, and my next-door neighbor came over one day to see if I can, um... The smoke that they make in clubs to see if he had the right solution because he had like a smoke machine in his house. Wait, 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 hold, wait, on, wait hold on, hold on. Slow down. All right, now, Melissa, you're 15 years old. No, and... I'm not 15 now. I'm 20 now. Okay, but you were 15 I and was 15 years old. a neighbor came over and... And he came over and asked him if I can test out the smoke machine that he has, see if the solution's like too strong. And so I did. Hold on. The smoke machine? Yeah, what do you, you mean? Know, like, when you go to a club, they have like smoke everywhere. I don't know what it's for. So he came over, yeah. your neighbor brought over a smoke machine no. to test it in your house? No, I had to go over his house. Okay, well, you said your neighbor came over. He yeah. came over to ask her to come to his house. Ah. Yeah, there you go. To look at his smoke machine. <laughs> Will you please come look at my smoke machine? Wow. I want to see if it's working properly. When you And you were 15, how old was the neighbor? 27. Oh, my God. Oh, dear. Here's I trouble. bet there was a machine that smoked. Oh, yeah. Well, we wound up having sex and stuff, and that, that oh. like went on for three years. And, like, I haven't talked to him in, like, two years now because I'm married and I have, like, two kids now. And, like, the other day I was over cutting his grass and he wanted to come over to my house and talk to me. So we talked. Yeah. <laughs> we talked. I could, like, perform oral sex on him and stuff. You that. performed oral sex on him when? <laughs> when did you perform oral sex on him? Mm, last Friday. Last Friday. Are you, uh, <laughs> you, you say you're married? Yeah, I'm married. So your husband didn't know this either? Oh, God, no. My husband wants to beat him up, but no. Because <laughs> well, my husband knows about him and me like when we're younger and stuff. Because I got pregnant by him. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Whoa, <laughs> oh, whoa, man. whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> This is like a great Jerry Springer show. Do you know yeah, Michelle? Know. Do you know Michelle? <laughs> Who? Listen, call us some other day. Yeah. Okay. And hey, call Springer too, because no. you might be able to get on that show. Sure. Really? That's a, me? that's a great story, but there's just too many loose ends there. Why? Why? I'm really? nervous. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just completely nervous. We'll explain it to you some other day. Okay. Some thanks. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Hello, Donna Mike show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hello. Are you talking to me? I gave him oral sex Friday. Yeah, my husband wants to beat him up because he knows. Well, he's actually the father of my first child. Oh, my God. I was pregnant from the neighbor. I was 15. He wanted me to see his smoke machine. Come over. Look, I have a smoke <laughs> machine that I would like you to see. Hello there. That a Mike show. Wow. Hello. What, what's your story? You talking to me? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. My story is I was on vacation with my parents, and I, I was supposed to be asleep in the bed. Uh, we had a double bed in the, uh, in the hotel room, and they went downstairs to the hotel bar and picked up a uh, uh, kind of a lounge rat and came, brought her home, and uh, I uh, was witness to their three-way escapades. And uh, that was when I was 13 years old, and they have no idea that uh, I... So what you're saying is that when you were a kid, you were in a hotel, and your mom and dad went to the bar and picked somebody right. up. Right. Well, they them... went out, and they came home with this woman. They were all, they were, they were, all three of them were hammered. And, uh, and I, was, uh, I was awake when they came in and uh, witnessed the entire... But I was too...
too scared to 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 uh, let them know that I was awake and I witnessed the entire. How old are you now? I'm 34. See, I'm wondering what it would be like to call the parents. I wonder what the parents would say. The parents. I, I know. Well, it's, I guess that's why we're playing this game. Yeah. But I, exactly. You know, it would be. It would be. They live in Florida, and I live here in uh, in Maryland. So are you close? I to couldn't take. Any, I wouldn't have to take any uh, personal, uh, you know, physical abuse. But I'm um, sure it would. It would probably upset them a little bit. <laughs> are you close to your parents now? Um, yeah. I, I mean, as close as I can be. I have. Uh, uh, we're about to have our third child, and um, you know they're as close as grandparents can be that are out of town. I guess. Uh, All right, hold on a second. Okay. Hold on. What's you know, your name? My name is Jim. His name is Jim. His name is Jim. Jim. Mm. Wow. These are all great calls for getting they today. Sure are. My <laughs> God. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hi. Hi. I have a story for you. Yes. Um, how about when I was in high school? I came home one night. And my dad had fallen asleep on the recliner. Uh, Playboy was on the TV, and he had his pants down around his ankles, and he had a box of tissues sitting next to him. And uh, all, right, oh. listen, all these are taking the same theme. Uh, yeah, well, we certainly okay. opened up Pandora's box, so to speak, haven't we? <laughs> I think we're going to go with the guy that found the pictures of his mom and dad having sex. Which now is like a Disney call. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so we'll go with him. We've got the others for backup, and we'll be right back. This is the Dawn and Mike Show. What is, what is the secret that your dad doesn't know? <laughs> About five years ago, we had a Halloween party at work, and we were going to have karaoke, so I asked him if I could borrow your video camera. So he gave it to me with a tape and said just to tape over. Well, a guy after the party asked if he could borrow the video, and when he gave it back to me, he was very embarrassed, and he said, I don't recommend you give us anybody else to view. And I said, why? And he said, there's a mini porn of your parents at the end of this video. <laughs> oh, dear. I tell <laughs> so, you, we certainly opened the floodgates, didn't we? <laughs> we bust open a vein today. We really did. We found something. We, we struck a nerve. So you, now did you watch the video? Well, my husband and I viewed it just for a moment, but then we had to turn it off because it was my parents. No! So I have, we, have it, we have it in the drawer, and I have it labeled Mom and Dad porn so and i haven't given it back to them yet <laughs> were they actually having sex uh they were about to oh my they god a, i'd like to a, i'd like to take uh, you through uh, i'd like to take you through the progression this started with just <laughs> pictures of nate of mom naked walking on the beach right then pictures of mom and dad having sex right. and now a videotape of mom and dad having sex mm -hmm. boy i don't know you know I don't know which one of these to go with, because a video is certainly better than a picture. It's much more current than theirs are. Or how long ago was yours? That was about five years ago. Oh, my God. Ago. Hold on. Did you did you give Christine your number? I'm sorry? Uh, did I give her my number? Yeah, your Or your dad's number? No. Just All right, hold on. Yeah, it. hold on. Yeah, we, we got to have that. Uh, mm -hmm. Christine, if you would get that from Lori... While we're waiting, here's one I, kn I know we're not going to uh, deal with, but I want to say hello to James... Calling us from South Carolina. How are you? Who had sex with his stepsister. Hey, hey, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, Give me credit now. She wasn't my stepsister when I started having sex with her. Ah, right, okay. Mr. Clean. How are you? How are you, James? I, I'm good, man. I'm good. You got to give me credit. She was not my stepsister when Look I started who's having sex with her. It's Mr. Clean. So you had sex with her, and then she happened to become your stepsister. That's right. My dad was dating this woman, so I started doing some stiff hard board banging with the, her daughter. <laughs> stiff eye board banging. The okay. Next, the next thing, you know, my dad gets married. Well, once she became my sister legally, of course, it had already been penetrated more or less to say, so we just continue to act. Do you think up. Valerie Harper right now is calling her publicist? Yes. Saying, I cannot believe that I'm waiting and they are taking these telephone calls. Get me out of here. Valerie Harper, listen, I promise we're going to treat you great. Don't leave. Yes, we're. this is just a it, it tends to be an ugly segment. <laughs> but it's our show, man. That's right. We can't turn our back on the ugliness. No. Nope. We're the ugly meisters. Mm -hmm. uh, James no, no, thank you. James? Yes. Yeah, yes but, no, but, no, thank you. Much as I would like to. We thought it was a lovely story, and you told it so well, but uh, we, we might be going with uh, either Lori or Mike. Well, congratulations to Lori or Mike, then. Right. Bye-bye. Okay, Thanks, let's, James. 
Let's do try to call Lori's dad, because remember, Lori's the gal that has it on videotape, and she still has the video. That's right. You still have it, right, uh, Lori? I do. I do. All right. Hold and you have pretty line. good parent, uh, hopefully a pretty good relationship with your dad. And he loves you guys. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, we'll call him right now. What a Father's Day this could be. Uh -huh. This is great. He's going to get the video back and a set of golf clubs. <laughs> And then Lori gets 200 bucks. That's terrific. <laughs> everybody's everybody's a winner. <laughs> Except Lori, whose yeah. eyes are still burning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, what was the total time spent, Lori, uh, watching that video? Yeah. Hello? Only... Hello? Yes, hello, John, please. Yeah. John, hello, it's Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. We're doing our radio show right now. Huh? It's the Don and Mike show. Yeah. We're and on the air doing our fabulous radio program. Right. And we have your daughter, Lori, on the line with us. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lori. I'm listening to Don and Mike. Hello? Are yeah. You, are you listening to us on the radio? Or are you listening? Yeah. Oh, so you might actually be clued into what we're uh, calling you about. I got a feeling. Why? Why do you think we're calling you, John? I have no idea. <laughs> well, I think it's got something to do with what your dad don't know. Yes, yes, that's that's true, sir. Okay. <laughs> did you did you hear what Lori called in with? I. Did you know it was your Lori when she called in? The last one. Yeah. No. Well. Is your dad an Italy O slay? <laughs> Ori lay? No. Okay, O nay. Okay. All right, well, okay. then, then uh, Lori, go ahead. Father's Day weekend. Uh -huh. Tell your dad what he doesn't know. Here's the big secret, and Lori, you take it from here. Okay, Dad. About five years ago when uh, we had that Halloween party at work when I, Scott and I were the fat couple. I remember. And I borrowed your video camera. Yeah. You had a tape in there that I taped over. Oh, really? And I had given it to uh, Bill to view. <laughs> he took it home. Yeah. And when he gave it back to me, he told me I shouldn't show anybody else because there was kind of a mini movie of you and Mom at the end of it. <laughs> And so I still have that, and I have it labeled Mom and Dad's Porn. And it's, it's, in, the, it's in the box at home. Wow. John. Yeah. John, you taping yourself having sex with your wife? Uh, kind of. Uh, kind, oh, kind of. Kind of, no. That's, it's not a kind of question. Yes, yes, you did, right? <laughs> I guess. Well, it's Lori's way of saying, Happy Father's Day to you, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> right. Are you going to kill me? What's that, John? Who am I speaking to? Huh? This is, Who am I speaking to? Uh, uh, Lori, I won't you say it in Pig Latin this time. Is your dad slow? No. <laughs> okay, John, yeah. this is Don and Mike. We're doing our show right now. We're playing that game. What my father doesn't know won't hurt him. And your daughter called in to say that she found a tape of you having sex with your wife. <laughs> and and she still has the videotape. And uh, hers was the best secret. And that's why we called you and had Lori share the secret with you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, now, right? <laughs> Are you, are you playing dumb a little bit here, John? Just a little bit. <laughs> All right. Or is it happy hour? Mm. No, Which is not, it? Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I guess it will be uh, later on tonight. It, it huh? may be, yeah. <laughs> How often did you and your wife tape yourself having gymnastics? One time. It was only, only one time? <laughs> one time. Wow. And uh, I, guess you just, <laughs> I guess you just forgot about that videotape, huh? Uh, I guess I did. <laughs> Lori, to, to help your dad's memory, yeah. describe. I know you didn't see the whole tape, but can you describe to him what you did see? <laughs> uh, we got to verify this, Lori. Okay. Well, it was um, it was probably sitting on the dresser, the camera, and uh, Dad was walking in front of the camera, and Mom was on the bed. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and you can kind of use your imagination. No, 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 no! Come on. <laughs> oh, oh no! I, I turned it off right about as he got closer to her. <laughs> but it would be safe to say, Lori, that neither one of them had anything on. Oh, very. <laughs> <laughs> was your dad? Aroused in a Viagra state? <laughs> it, it seemed, it appeared that way. It appeared that way. Huh? <laughs> were you, were you impressed? Oh, uh, he's my dad. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and you, John, you're so yeah. kinky, man. Yeah, this is my fault, you know. Yeah, yeah, it is your fault, but that's all right. You know, you, you know, you're actually, you're actually going to come out a winner on this. Does no one ask you? Uh, <laughs> I'm the reason they listen to you. <laughs> I know. Oh. Well, John, we thank you for that. But okay. Way to go, Johnny. 
I guess the lesson is if you're going to tape yourself banging your wife, you should hold on to the videotape. Well, I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, Lori, you get 200 bucks. Great. And, and Johnny... You've won a set of power-built TPS titanium insert irons. Do you play golf, sir? Uh, no. No, oh, man, I oh, guess you sure. don't win then. But, no. uh... I have been thinking about taking it up. Well, <laughs> and a, <laughs> and a set of junior clubs for... Uh, a child. Grandson. A grandson. A grandson. Perfect. Oh, won't grandson be happy to know that dad made a tape of him banging grandma? Uh, you've also won. You've also won 18 holes of golf at Pleasant Valley Golfers Club lunch for two. Visit Pro Golf Discount Fairfax for all your Father's Day gifts. John, happy Father's Day. No, thank you. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Uh, thank you. Oh, you're good. Thank you, honey. Wow. You're good. <laughs> all right, kids. Hold on. A second. Yeah, two hundred dollars for Lori. Way to go, Lori. Hold on a second. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. My God, you got to watch out for that nineteenth hole. <laughs> you got to watch out for those videotapes yeah. when you're golfing. Watch out for Mom's nineteenth hole. Oh my God. Now, I feel bad for this guy Mike, who called in and started all of this when he said he had pictures of his mom and dad mm -hmm. having sex, which seem now to pale in comparison to actually sure. having the video. But Mike, yeah, we've got. Double prizes, double prizes. Double prizes, Mike. <laughs> Mike, we will give you the opportunity now to call your father and tell him your tale. Okay. Um, he's at work right now. I don't have the phone, phone number on me. Yeah, yeah, this is called Weasel Out. No, 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 really, I'm not. Why would you call to play? Don't you know that we always call the father? Well, you, you could call him, but I need to get the number. Right. Uh, Mike, uh, okay. Yeah, right. Okay. No, actually, I, I will. <laughs> right. Okay. It's his, it's his um, office. In, um... Okay. Let's not give the details on the office. Okay, Mike? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Mike, do you want the opportunity to call him, or do you yes, not have... Yes, I would like oh, that. Okay. Hold on, please. Hold on. Just a, <laughs> just a second. Yeah, that makes me go, hmm, too. Somebody but. get that number from line three, please. Right. I think Lori was on the level. There's, I do. Very. I'd like to see the tape instead. Sure. <laughs> I think Lori was completely on the. Uh, and the funniest of that was that John John got Lori to listen to the show. All right. Hello, Donna Mike show. Uh, yes, hi. Um, uh, I've got an anecdote about uh, Valerie Harper. I thought I might share with you. An anecdote about Valerie Harper? Oh yeah. Now keep in mind that the woman is sitting in the next room waiting to come on the show. Is it? Well, right. I was going to ask you uh, if, if you could ask her if she remembers the anecdote. I was six years old at the time. If you if she remembers who? Uh, if she remembers meeting me when I was six. How I, how many years ago would that have been? Oh well, I'm 33 now. So. Why would she remember that? Well, because I, you know it was a striking situation. I met her on the set of the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Yes, and. Well, it was uh, it was kind of funny. I was uh, seeing a child psychologist at the time. How do you remember it if you were six? Oh, it was e it's easy to remember. Uh, listen, Valerie just stuck her head in the door. She says, "F you." <laughs> she doesn't remember you. <laughs> F off. She said, no, I, I, she, she, listen, I'm just repeating what she said. She, oh man, she, mayor, <laughs> mayor, <laughs> F off. <laughs> Tell that guy to F off. Hello, Donna Mike Show. I hope she hey. stays now. <laughs> Hello. Hey guys, listen, hey. I think you should definitely do the one with the guy with the threesome in bed with his parents. I mean, that seems to me the most interesting, if nothing else. The guy catching his parents having a threesome in bed, this this would be a triumphant radio moment. It's our new producer calling. Right <laughs> Here now. he is. All right. Thank you, Mr. Helper. Listen, we already picked, we thought the guy, with, the woman with the videotape was the best one. Yeah, and then, she was great, but I'm, you know, this guy who's calling for the office number, forget him. I'm, okay. All right. Listen, thank you very much. I'll come tell you how to do your job tonight. <laughs> do we have the guy's number? Hey, Mike, did you give Christine the number? She's getting the, uh, the information now. I mean, she's getting the information. I believe she's getting the number for me. What do you mean she's getting the number? Oh, here comes Charlie Broyo. What do you mean? Oh. Dad doesn't know anything about where his father works other than the oh, company and detector. the city. Oh, crap come on. detector. I don't know his, his office one. I never call yeah. him at oh. his office. Right. Okay. See you later. Bye, Mike. No. Bye. 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 Oh, come on. No, I don't, really. Oh, I don't yeah, ever call yeah. him. Any yeah, really. Okay, see you later, Mike. That's also when you're going to get the crap. Right. The really part. Really, truly. <laughs> really, I did, Donna, Mike. <laughs> All right, here's the guy that saw his parents in the threesome. 
Hey, how you doing? Uh -uh. Well, he hung up. All right, problem solved. Hey, I don't want to take anything away from Lori's performance, yeah, which was, I thought was solid. It was a good one. That's right. Lori and her dad, Johnny, they're the winners today on what my father doesn't know won't hurt him. Let go. And unless she's calling her publicist right now, <laughs> Rhoda Morgenstern. That's right. Valerie Harper. I'm a super fan of Valerie Harper, but I have to, I have to lay it on the line about this new proposed show. Right. Valerie, if you're still listening in the other room, just remember these three words. Odd couple two. <laughs> it won't work, but I want to say it to your beautiful face. So I will shut up now, and when we come back, yeah. Valerie Harper. Excellent. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. The Don and Mike Show on 98.1 The Peak. How'd you like to look and feel better than you have in years? Now you can. Introducing Fat Assassin with MedPro brand Pyruvate. Fat Assassin is a drug-free dietary supplement containing high-potency natural ingredients clinically proven to burn off body fat. Clinical studies prove that the patented ingredients in Fat Assassin work with your body naturally to boost your metabolism and enhance the benefits of exercise. Is Fat Assassin perfect for you? Just ask Jessica, Nashville's hot new singing sensation. Look for Jessica's new CD available this fall at music stores everywhere. Sir, is everything all right? You don't look so good. Ah, my feet are killing me. I'm all achy. I got to get out of the city for a couple days. I heard about this awesome Dr. Scholl's sweepstakes to Aspen for a three-day, two-night getaway. Dr. Scholl's Odor and Wetness wants to send you on an Aspen Spa getaway. To enter, print your name, address, phone number, and age to Dr. Scholl's Odor and Wetness Sweepstakes, P.O. Box 1942, Seaford, New York, 11783. Must be received by July 6, 1998. For rules, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to the same address. No purchase.